select as we go to 1 Kings, verses 1 through 12. Praise God. Verses 1 through 12. And it says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba which belongs to Judah and left his servant there but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree or a broom tree some versions say and he prayed that he might die and said it is enough now Lord take my life for I am no better than my father's then as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food 40 days, say 40 days and 40 nights as he as far as Horeb the mountain of God and as and after 40 days there he went into a cave say a cave and spent the night in that place and behold the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him what are you doing here Elijah so he said I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword I alone am left and they seek to take my life then he said go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord and behold the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, still small voice. Say that with me. A still small voice. Bless this word, Lord, and anoint these ears of those who are watching in Jesus' name. Amen. You may take your seat. I want to preach from the subject entitled, You're Built for This. You're built for this. I'm going to say that one more time. You are built for this. I'm going to go over here and talk to these folk over here. Y'all quiet over there. You're built for this. I'm going to come back over here. You're built for this. Balcony folks, you're built for this. Those who are watching, you're built for this. Amen. Many of us, we go through some tough times, hard times, difficult times, personal times, uh, times we may ache in our bodies, times we may suffer persecution, times things are not working right on the job, times things are going on within the families. Come on, come on talk to me, somebody. Uh, things are going on on the job. Uh, sometimes you may need favor from God. And uh, you may have to go through uh, a, a set of circumstances. You may have to go through some things in order for that blessing to come. And sometimes uh, we may look for certain blessings to come, uh, you know, that God has promised us different kinds of ways. But God has a way of surprising us. Amen. Because whatever God does is right. Whatever God does is good. Whatever does and whatever God does is timely. He's on time. Look somebody and say he's on time. God is on time. And so sometimes we sometimes we can become a little discouraged when we go through the worst of the worst and we may feel like, God, are you with me? God, are you still speaking to me? God, uh, Lord, I just need 
uh, uh, I need a sign, Lord. I need a word from you, Lord. I, I need to know, Lord God, because I feel like this is an un insurmountable situation. I'm uh, going through a medical issue, Lord, and if you don't touch me, Lord, I don't know what to do. But sometimes the devil, what he will do, he'll get inside our minds and infil infiltrate our minds so much so it aggravates your medical condition even worse. Especially if you get around the wrong folk. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Because I must be in the room because sometimes that's what we do, y'all. We get on the phone and we talk to the wrong folks. Right? Well, I can't get a hold to the positive folk. Just wait on the Lord. That positive person will call you or whatever it might be. Don't go to the person who's always speaking negative. No, you don't need that. Way, way, you know, stay away from those kind of folks. Amen. You want to be around somebody who is positive. Are you with me? Say amen. Have you ever been afraid of something? Come on now. Y'all know you in church. Have you ever been afraid of something? Been scared? Been intimidated? <laughs> Felt like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can go through this. They think I can do this, but I don't know if I can do this. Lord, I, I, I just, I, I, this might be a little bit too much for me. Mm -hmm. but God says you're built for this. Do you scare easily? You afraid of the dark? Does your hair stand up? What little hair I got, you know? You ever felt like you just couldn't survive after going through something devastating? After receiving some devastating news, news that you didn't even see coming? Somebody came to you and said something that you didn't even think they would even say to you. And it tore your heart apart. It just messed you up i mean it just lord whatever you had to eat it just didn't stay inside of you i'm not trying to be graphic you just i'm like god your nerves are just tore up you're just like jesus are you serious now did you just really say that to me did you just really say that to my spouse did you just say that to my child did you just say that to my grandchild sometimes we may want to a, a rescue or save someone from something that's devastating you may be able to help but only God can help us when we get through excuse me tough times mm -hmm. have you ever lost sleep because your mind has just been inundated with the news you received. The challenge now that you have to face. Somebody's like, Lord, this message is for me already. I feel somebody already. Lord, this is just too much. I, I just don't know. I, they say I have the skill level. They say I, 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 I could do this, but... Uh, uh, well, well, sir, ma'am, you're already doing the job already. No, but it, 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 this is what's going on. You don't know if you can remain committed. God may be trying to raise you up higher. Right? You said, Lord, take me higher. Okay, well, Lord said, I want to take you higher in this sense, in this area, or in that area over there. Lord, I'm not ready for that. Don't talk your blessing away. I don't know who that word is for. No, 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 no. Don't push it away. Sometimes we talk ourselves out of good things. And then sometimes we'll blame it on the devil. It's not the devil. You talk yourself out of it. You missed an opportunity, a golden opportunity for God to get the glory out of your life. Don't do that. Don't do that. But you're built for this. How many of you believe that we're living in a very chaotic time? Yeah, we're living in a rough time, tough time. People going through, people don't go through the same way today they did 20 years ago. It's much worse. Diseases upon diseases. Fear has multiplied. Oh, my God. Folks are sicker than ever. 
because of the current pandemic. Hospitals can't even hold folks. Lord Jesus. Folks act like this disease ain't even here because of how they act. This thing has been so politicized, it's ridiculous. If you're like me, I like to watch the news, but sometimes I got to turn it off and watch something I don't want to watch. Like, my God! These folk over here fighting these folk, and these folk over there fighting this. And I mean, it's like, you know, y'all know the old wrestling matches. You remember that? Back in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know. And, and, and they would say, you know, I'm going to get you, and oh, I don't like you, and all this. And then they're hanging out 10 minutes after the game or whatever it was, the match. They're best of friends. Why? They were just putting on a show, but these folk ain't putting on no show. Some of these folk are threatening each other's lives as well as their lives are being threatened. Terror, fear, all these things, nervousness, Lord have mercy, can cause a person's health to decline. And we're unfortunately causing our own health to decline by what we entertain ourselves with who we allow to speak into our spirit. Now, I once had somebody say, and I heard somebody say this to another person, not to me, well, you can't speak that over, over my spirit. Well, wait a minute, you don't have to receive it. Talk to me on that. You don't have to receive what some people say to you. Amen. Let me just give you a little background of what's going on here in the text, and we're going to get out of here and go eat some chicken. How's that? They say if there's going to be one bird in heaven... Pastor Dixon is going to be the chicken. <laughs> he's, he's falling out. You know why? Because they say it's the gospel bird. <laughs> so we get that on the way home. Lord, I done made it up here. Where's the gospel bird at? Some of y'all too deep for me. I can't hang out with you. I want to be with somebody I can cut up with and laugh and fall out. Amen. Look somebody say, you're built for this. King Ahab of Israel, he was a very wicked king. The Bible says that up to this point in time that he was the most wicked king that had ever lived. Up to this point. He was the husband of of the evil queen called Jezebel. A pastor that I work with in ministry, a church that uh, I helped to, to plant years ago when I was back east, and uh, today they're celebrating, praise God, their ninth anniversary. We thank the Lord for that, praise God. But, but there's, a, there, there's, a, there, there's a store, it's called Jezebel's. And the, 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 the pastor's wife or the, the assistant pastor, the female, she just was like, oh, 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 no, no, Pastor Webb, I ain't going there, I ain't going there, I ain't going there. Why? It's a Jezebel. I'm going to eat my cake. Oh, okay, you're going to eat the devil's food. It doesn't it say deviled. Some of you get that on the way home. See, y'all too deep for me. Anyway, let's preach and let's get out of here and go eat some chicken. <laughs> First King 1630. He was the most evil king that ever lived up to this point. A, a very hated man, a very feared man. Man that would concoct diabolical schemes. One and uh, uh, for an example, he said he, he's, he went to his mama Jezebel, his wife. He said, I want Naboth's vineyard. His name was Naboth, N-A-B-O-T-H. I want Naboth's vineyard. He won't give it to me. She said, well, aren't you the king? Yeah. He won't give it to me. He got his wife whining. Let Ma see about it. So what did she do? She concocted a diabolical scheme. Had this man killed. God didn't like that so much so that, oh my God, later on the scripture said how even Jehu, King Jehu, positive, 
anointed man of God, anointed king. Later on, I'm moving in certain parts of the scripture to shorten the story so you understand because of all the evil and wickedness that both he and his wife did to thousands of people over a process and period of time. Even in that situation when King Jehu came to town, the Bible says there were two eunuchs that were up there on the roof around the window area. And he said, who's on the Lord's side? We're on the Lord's side. Throw her from the roof. Threw Jezebel. Y'all should know that. That's in the word. Threw her from the roof. The Bible says that once she fell, her body burst. And the dogs licked up her blood. Eight of all of her remains. How many of you know that God has a way of taking care of folks far better than we do? Folk do wrong to you, let God work it out. Let God handle things. Not saying God going to kill them. No, I know me praying stuff like that. No, let God handle stuff because he knows that we ain't praying right in no way. Say amen. But that was just one of uh, many examples of the things that both uh, Ahab and his evil wife Jezebel did that is recorded in Scripture. First King 1630 says he was the most evil king that lived up to this point in life. Yeah, he did more evil in the sight of God than any other king. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Jezebel was notorious for finding and killing the prophets of God. And sounds in anyone who dared to publicly worship God. Don't you worship God publicly. We'll have your head severed. We'll, we'll have you beheaded. Yeah. Y'all ain't Old Testament folk. You should be. Y'all ain't like, y'all know these stories. I need to start taking y'all to Sunday school. Come on now. Bible, uh, Romans 15, 4 says, those things that were written aforetime were for our learning. Say learning. So that we through the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So if I tell you these stories, you go back and read this stuff. Just like the Bereans in the book of Acts. They were known to go back and study what they heard Paul and others teach them. Is that preacher really preaching right? What did the Bereans do? They went back and they studied and they researched prayerfully. We want to make sure he's saying some good swelling words, but we want to make sure he's talking right. Go back and search the scripture for yourself. Amen. It's in there. Amen. Mm-hmm. But as a warning to return to the Lord, the prophet Elijah had warned Ahab to repent. Because Ahab's refusal, there had been three years of drought and famine in Israel. So now our story begins at the end of those three years, say three years. As Elijah came out of hiding to confront King Ahab and the people of Israel now. So now we see him fearlessly, he challenged Ahab and the 450 prophets of Baal in the 18th chapter. 18th chapter, right? We see that's what he's doing. Okay, and I'm going to take you through the story real quick. We're going to get out of here. So, so now, <clears throat> now when you read up there in verses 17 through 38, I love what the prophet Elijah said in verse 24. He said, you call on the name of your gods, little G-O-D, and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire. He is God. If I could subtitle this message, I would subtitle it, When the Fire Falls. Yeah, 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 yeah. So God in his mighty display of power, praise God, he showed up for Elijah while the false idol God of Baal accomplished nothing. Now, this is what happened. The scripture says that those 450 prophets of Baal for hours is what they did. They, they got so, if you could just pan the camera so they can see what I'm, you know, 
Oh, they, they on the stage, they built a stage, and, and they built on, you know, they have so much sacrifice, animals, and all this stuff. And, oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. And the scripture goes on to say how they just jump up and down for hours trying to concoct a God to come and help them and rescue them. Come on now, because it was, so, it was like a competition. Anybody know me? I ain't that kind of person. I don't want to hang around you. If you feel like you got to be so competitive, get away from me. I don't want to even befriend you. I don't, you know, that's a work of the flesh. It's called emulations. When people strive to outdo other folks. It's in there. Yeah. When you look, when you look at the scripture, it's right there. Praise God. In, in, in Galatians. Talks about it. Emulations. When somebody strives to outdo somebody else. Oh, it's a competition going on. Okay, but the man of God said, go ahead. Go ahead. Call, call your God. He started messing with him. He said, well, maybe your God is sleep. Right? That's what it says in the, it's in the book. And, you know, maybe your God is going on vacation. Maybe he's in the bathroom. Maybe he's over here. Maybe he's over there. Right? So they, oh, just imagine, 450 men just bouncing up and down looking real crazy. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So nothing happens. When you search the scripture and you read the story, you'll find, okay, get out of the way. All right. He prayed, and guess what? God answered by fire. All the water that was put out there, everything else that was put out there, what did God do? He answered by fire. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Jesus, I feel this. God is going to answer you by fire in some situations in your life. He's going to burn some situations out of your life and even out of you. Burn some things out of us. But anyway, praise God. Uh, so these 450 prophets, they met their unfortunate fate. God told him to have all of them executed. See, God didn't play in Old Testament. Thank God we're under grace. Look, look at my say, thank God I'm under grace. Thank you, Jesus. None of us would be here, amen. <laughs> So afterward, he prayed to God, and the three-year drought came to a miraculous end. And finally, in what seems like God, he's just showing off. One more time, he answered by fire. Verse 1, we're going to move quick. We're going to move quick, I promise you. So Elijah, you know, did what he was supposed to do in 18 and 19 happens, and then Jezebel heard about it. She didn't like what she heard. Uh-uh, she ain't uh-uh. What? What? He killed my people? Are you serious? Yeah, yes, ma'am. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Verse 2. So, Jezebel, she sent him an email. She sent a text message. That's what she did. She sent him a text message, did he? That's what she did. By this time tomorrow. Not tomorrow, by this time tomorrow. What you did to my folks, I'm going to have done to you. Mm -mm. Just imagine now. God used this man powerfully. Then he runs from an evil woman. After all that courage and fearless obedience to God, God answered at the call and prayer of the prophet Elijah. Elijah received this email, this text message, and Queen Jezebel terrified the living, you know what, out of him. It scared the living daylights out of him. The message now promised that by this time, the next day, she would have him killed. And guess what? He's running for his life. 
How many of us have gotten bad news and we just got so extremely terrified? I ain't looking nobody, I ain't looking nobody, I ain't looking nobody, I ain't looking nobody. No hope, no nothing. Not even a prayer. Not even saying, God help me, Jesus. Not even saying, Jesus. You just wallow around and, oh, God. Just give in to it. Give in to that bad doctor's report. Give in to somebody, you know, being crazy, talking crazy to you. Okay, not y'all, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm out in the right church today. I just want to make, come on now, verse 3. He saw this message and ran to Beersheba. Oh, God, fear took over. In spite of everything God did within the previous 24 hours, he's scared, filled with fear, tired. He was just through. He gave up. I can't do this. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. The possible loss of his life flashed before his eyes. For many of us, the possible loss of even our very lives flashes before our eyes. Or the loss of something when we get bad news. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay, let me hear it. Y'all ain't talking to me today. Y'all quiet. But verse 4, he went a day's journey in that wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree. I can't do this. This is enough. Take my life. I ain't no better than those who went before me. No. I'm no better compared to them. Stop comparing yourself to folks. Be who God made you to be. There's only one you. We are all originals. Praise God. You have a destiny. You have a purpose. If you're still here, you still have a purpose. God still has a plan for your life. Yes, he does. Look at somebody and say, God has a plan for me. He went 20 miles. That's a long way. Some of you live 20 miles away. Some of you commute 20 miles or even more than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He traveled that long and he sat, he went and sat underneath a juniper tree. I'll give you a whole lot of interesting information on that. But a juniper tree was a shade tree that gave you some good shade in the Saudi Arabian desert. Anybody ever been deployed there? I've been deployed there before. But that wood, they would use that wood to build caskets. Build what we call caskets or coffins. A person's last lying place to be viewed, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that kind of tree even venomous creatures wouldn't go near it because of the poisonous chemicals that were inside of that tree. And so, so he was directed now, or rather he chose to go sit underneath a tree that would not only give him shade, but that would also protect him from poisonous, venomous animals like snakes, cobras, all, all that kind of thing that's over there. God has a way of directing you to sit underneath some juniper trees spiritual juniper trees not only to give you the shade that you need but to protect you from all the wiles and the plans and the schemes of the devil god has a way of directing you in those areas where you can get some peace some sleep some rest but he said i can't take this anymore i've had enough you ever say that to your kids Moms, come on, I'm looking at some moms. You said it to your kid? You, you said that, Pastor Dixon, your, 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 your kid? Moms, you ever say that? I'm sick of this. I'm, I'm looking at every mom up in here. Am I right, mom? Okay, any other moms? Moms over here, did you say it to your kids? Don't you do that no more, I'm going to wow. Moms, I'm looking at y'all. Did you say, I had enough? I'm looking at the choir, moms, you too? She said, that's right. You said, mom, uh-huh. Moms, yeah, moms, grandmoms, all you, uh-huh. 
dad's weeks, and mm, you go on your mama. Yeah, huh? But you said, I've had enough. Stop it. That's, where he, that's how he felt. He said, I've had enough, Lord. I can't take it no more. He just had a little temper tantrum all by himself. He said, I can do bad alone. I can't take this. No. No, no, no. Mm -mm. This, is where, this is what happened. He resorted to depression. He resorted to depression. Wanting to take his own life. God, just take me out of here. I can't do this no more. I'm not going to ask if you've ever said that. I understand if you have. See, I sympathize with people. I don't judge folk. Because, you know, I don't judge people based on a temporary condition. None of us have the right to do that. Because people go through things they go through. Now, I, I, I don't subscribe to suicide. No, I don't. I understand the feelings that people deal with that lead up to it. This is what I do for a living. I counsel folks. I get it. Been there myself. Understand it. But don't stay there. Look somebody and say, don't stay there. Don't you stay there. Don't you stay there. When I didn't know the Lord, that's where I was at. Drinking like crazy. Acting crazy. Doing the wrong things. Talk to me, somebody. Even in the Christian world, the devil, he, you know, he knows, okay, you may be saved. Shouting and hooking, hookity, hookity, hooky. Oh, hey, hey, hey! You might be doing all that kind of thing, but, 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 but I remember you when. So let me just mess with you because you're going through the roughest time of your life. See, he'll mess with you according to the things that you used to do. If you never drank before, you ain't gonna be tempted by that. Okay. Oh Lord, have mercy. But, 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 but if it's something you used to do. Well, you can just look over there. And you can just try it. How close can I get to it and still be saved? Talk to me, somebody. How, you know, how, how much can I get away with? Well, the Lord understands. Or you won't talk to me. Jesus. But I've had enough. I can't do this. I'm trying to move for the sake of time. Oh, Jesus, when you drop down to verses 9 through 12, Elijah, now he ate and he traveled 40 days to Mount Sinai. Verse 9 says, after those 40 days, he was, went into that cave. Many of us is what we do. After a while, we get into our own caves. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to hang out with nobody. I don't want to do anything. Leave me alone. And folks are still pulling on you, pulling on you, pulling on you, pulling on you. Help me, help me, help me, help me. And you say, I need help myself. Come on now. I need advice. I need this. Can you spare some change? Uh, can you, you know, loan me this? And yeah, you know they ain't going to give it back. Come on now. Talk to me, somebody. Can you do this for me? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? God, I need some help. But I've had enough. I can't do this. Then the Lord spoke to him. Elijah, what are you doing here? The Lord is speaking to some of you, and he's asking you, what are you doing here? Why are you in this situation? You don't have to be here. This is not what I called you for. This is temporary. You can get through this. Let me give you an alternate, you know, an alternate route to go. Let me show you something different. So he fell asleep, the Bible says, in that cave. Praise God. Scholars tell us that Elijah, he stayed in the very cleft of the rock where God had placed Moses as his glory passed in Exodus 33, verses 21 through 23. In that very area, God challenged him and he said, what are you doing here? So he said, I've been very zealous, verse 10, Lord, and you know, I just want to do what's right, but you know all the prophets were killed and all this, and I'm just the only prophet left. No, you ain't the only prophet left. I have a whole lot more prophets than you. Sometimes you feel like you're just the only one doing right. You're just going through. No, 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 no. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. 
Nothing at all. Not at all. But God, I just want to do your will. But look at the mess I'm in right now. But he said, I'm the only prophet and I'm just saw, highly sought after to be killed. They won't rest till they kill me. But in this message, I just want to give you one thing God wants us to do. Not three things, but just one thing. When you look at verses 11 and 12, just position yourself to hear the voice of the Lord. Because he wants to talk to you. He wants to speak to you. He has something he wants you to know. Something he wants to get across to you. Yeah, he wants to encourage you. God has a way of coming to us that we don't even expect him to come. The faithful saying we, we've, we've said and that's been passed throughout generations. He may not come when we want him. Come on, help me preach this message. He may not come when we want him, but he's what? Always on time. Dottie Peoples used to sing the song, he's an on-time on time God. What? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. Verse 12, and after the fire, a still, small voice. When we get by ourselves, beloved, during our prayer times, we still need to hear that still, small voice. We still need that voice to comfort us. We need that voice to strengthen us. We need that voice to give us direction. We need that voice to give us the peace. We need that voice to give us the hope for tomorrow. We need that voice to give us the hope for next week, the blessing for next year. We need that voice to give us a new lease on life that will lift up your spirit, lift up your countenance, encourage you, charge you forth, move you forward into what God has called you to do. Why? Because God says you're built for this. You're built for this. You're built for this. Stop complaining. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop feeling like I can't make it. There ain't nobody here for me. God says I'm with you. I'm trying to speak to you to pull you up out of this thing. Hallelujah. God says your wounds will heal. The inner peace will subside. God has got you in this situation for a reason so he can speak to you. You may want to die, but, it, but you ain't going to die before your time. The bigger, praise God, amen, the pain, the bigger the blessing. I got to say that one more time. The bigger the pain, the bigger the blessing. Hallelujah. The bigger the suffering. Hallelujah. In silence, the bigger the outcome. The bigger the suffering and silence that you're going through at home. You're going through pain at home. Going through pain on the job. Guess what? God said, you're not going to always be in that situation. I have a blessing on the, on the way for you. I have a door I'm going to open for you. I'm going to raise you up and move you into green pastures. Hallelujah. I'm going to lift you up. Hallelujah. Why are you standing here crying? God said, I'm here with you. Why are you in this situation, daughter? Why are you in this situation, son? You have no need to fear. But I love what David said in Psalm 27. Well, when he was running, praise God, unfortunately from King Saul, that, that coincides with 1 Samuel. He said, guess what? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even uh, the enemies they, and my foes come to eat up my flesh. Guess what they did? The Bible says, guess what they did? They stumbled and fell. Though an army encamps against me, my heart shall not fear. The war rises against me. This I will be confident in. Looks by and say one thing. Have I desired of the Lord, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. God, I wish I had somebody with me on that. But when fear takes over, you know, we just become, you know, unuseful for God. 
God said, I want to use you. I want to empower you. I want to send you forth and do some great things in, with, and through you. Hallelujah. But God says, you're built for this. You're built to survive. You're built for the persecution. You're built to overcome. You're built to get through it. You're built to press through. You're built to finish again. You're built to start again. You're built to finish strong. You're built for me to give you peace. You're built. Why? Because I've given you endurance. You can make it. You can make it. You can get through this. Stop crying. Stop complaining. Stop, 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 stop always looking for an opportunity to give up. Come on now. Come on now. You know the word. You know the word. You know the word. Do this. Do the word. Do the word. Do the word. Looks by saying you're built for this.